So, will your specific area see record-breaking cold this winter? Well, we need to take a look at several different factors, such as the climate division plot, where we do see the temperature anomalies for weak La Nina years compared to the long-term average, as we see a clear indication that in the northern Midwest, as well as the Pacific Northwest, it's much colder than average in those areas, typically speaking, during weak La Nina. So, this makes me more inclined to believe that in these areas, your coldest temperature will likely be colder than what you typically see during the winter time frame and in a lot of these areas this could this easily goes into the teens into the 20s um negatives um ranges when it comes to fahrenheit temperature so it gets definitely very very cold at times during the winter and during a week la nina winter we're more inclined to see potentially record-breaking cold in some of these areas because we see the temperature anomalies hover around four degrees below normal typically speaking and of course not every single day is going to be exactly four degrees below normal there's definitely going to be those much bigger anomalies let's say during cold spells where those temperatures could hover closer to the record breaking range where we could see um temperatures anywhere between 10 to 20 to even 30 degrees below average in some of these areas during the winter time frame so i think that the coldest temperature you will experience this winter will likely be colder than up the coldest temperature you experience in other winters in a lot of these areas in the northern midwest and the pacific northwest now outside of that we do see that it's also typically slightly cooler than normal during week la nina years in the southwestern portion of the united states but the anomaly isn't as strong i think that the cooler than average temperatures we might see during week la nina could definitely be offset by another factor that would bring potentially maybe warmer than average temperatures because the anomaly isn't very strong to the point where i'd feel very confident that the coldest temperature will be a lot lower than what you typically expect during the winter time frame and then taking a look further eastward we see temperatures hover more so around average we do have a slight anomaly above average in the southeast during week la nina winter so this could really go either way or maybe we see um the coldest temperature hover close um closer to what we typically see during the winter time frame rather than let's say the temperature being much colder than what you typically see or much even much warmer than what you typically see as that would be the most likely scenario based on what we typically see during week la nina year so in these areas i do expect the temperature the coldest temperature to be right about what you'd expect while for the western united states it's a different story Another thing I want to point out is that during week La Nina years, we of course see more snowfall than usual in a lot of the areas where the temperatures are colder than normal and this could play a big role in terms of bringing down the coldest temperature um you see this winter um into a temperature that's much colder than what you typically um see as your coldest temperature during the winter because snow is a very poor absorbent of heat energy from the sun which means that the more snow there is on the surface that means the less heat the surface will absorb so it simply would be a lot colder than normal if there's a lot of snow cover which would be more likely during a week la nina winter and i do believe that will contribute to your coldest temperature being much colder than what you typically see because you're bound to experience a lot more snow cover this winter in a lot of these areas that will retain heat very poorly and allow cold spells to be even more potent in a lot of these areas we see that this even extends into portions of the northeast such as higher elevations of new england more specifically as well as the Adirondacks, you typically see much more snowfall than usual during week la nina years so i believe that in at least in the extreme northern portions of the northeast you will also get involved with your coldest temperature being colder than what you typically expect so in these areas that's why i do expect the potential of record-breaking cold um when you combine the fact that week la nina has already bring colder than average temperatures and the fact that you see more snowfall than usual which will retain heat very poorly and allow the cold air to be a lot stronger in these areas now in terms of areas that experience less snowfall than usual that's mostly right around the southern rocky mountain ranges towards the southwest so in these areas 
you you would expect it to be less likely for your coldest temperature during the winter time frame to be as cold thanks to the fact that there's going to be less snow cover so the ground would be able to absorb a lot more heat from the sun so i do believe that will reduce the chances your coldest temperature will be much colder than what you typically see during the winter time in this area so here's the Pacific North American Oscillation. This also plays a big role in terms of what type of temperatures you should expect during a given time frame. And as you can see, by the time we approach early winter, we see that the PNA pattern is hovering right around the baseline or right around average when it comes to it, um, the what pattern or neutral, I should sh um, say, um, when it comes to the PNA pattern we're going to see during the winter time frame. We do have some pockets where we are in the negative, but other pockets where we are in the positive. So this could really go either way. I can't really say for certain if we're going to um, be in a positive or a negative PNA pattern, but definitely we're going to pay close attention to this over the next few weeks in the winter time frame as well as the, fo um, the forecast as it continues to adjust and in terms of what a positive and negative PNA pattern would mean for the United States if you're in a positive PNA pattern that typically brings colder than normal conditions right up along the eastern half of the United States while the western half experiences warmer than average temperatures while in the negative phase you'd expect the opposite to happen where the temperatures are colder than normal in the western United States but warmer than normal in the eastern United States as of right now I wouldn't say there's going to be a definitive PNA pattern that's going to dominate the winter time frame and it's still a little bit too early to say for certain what's going to happen so as of right now I'm not sure if the PNA pattern will necessarily contribute a ton to experiencing your coldest temperature this winter time especially since the anomalies are expected to be very variable and not very strong if um, by the time we approach early winter time frame so I'll keep you guys updated on that over the next few weeks and here's the current job monitor for the United States as of September 24th 2024 and as you can clearly see we do have several areas that are under a severe drought now in a lot of these areas especially here i assume that this um these drought indications are um somewhat outdated of course thanks to the landfall of hurricane helene which unfortunately brought a lot of flooding and rainfall right over this area so this i expect the drought to be nearly non-existent in a lot of these areas thanks to a hurricane helene's flooding um, but for the western half of the United States, the, we do see pockets where the drought is severe. Now, I expect this to go away in the Pacific Northwest because during a weak La Nina, that's what we typically see where we see much more moisture than usual move into the Pacific Northwest. So I do eventually expect the weak La Nina to take over and get rid of this drought, especially since during the summertime, it's very rare to get precipitation right up along the West Coast um, in any given day. So it's there's more likely of a chance for a drought to build up in this area. But by the time we approach winter time frame, of course, that's a different story. And when we have a La Nina compounding the more than usual precipitation during the winter time frame, that will, I think, allow the droughts to eventually go away for the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Midwest. So I don't believe that the drought will have a major effect when it comes to temperature, as I still do believe it will be much colder than normal in this area. For the chance of your coldest temperature to be far more colder than what you typically expect in some of these areas. Now, for the southern United States, since during a week, La Nina, it's typically drier than normal, and we do have some, especially more so right around Texas, Oklahoma, and New Mexico, we do have somewhat of a drought going on, and I do believe that will contribute to temperatures being a little bit warmer than normal overall for the winter time frame. So I think that will limit the chances that the coldest temperature you see this winter will be much different or at least any colder than what you typically expect and more than likely it'll be warmer than what you'd expect your coldest temperature to be during the winter time frame so definitely keep that in mind in the southern united states so taking a look at the NMME model, which is a climatological model that ranges from December, January, and February, um, we see that the temperature anomalies are expected to be warmer than normal for the main winter months. 
However, I'd take this with a grain of salt because this computer model does have a bias towards being warmer than average temperatures throughout the United States. Um, however, it still does bring an area right up along the west coast where temperatures fall closer to average, which is at least somewhat of what you'd expect for a weak La Nina. It's simply colder than normal in this area, but relative at least to the rest of the United States, this is in line to what you typically expect during weak La Nina, where the temperatures would be at least the coldest relative to the country over here. Um, so I do ex still expect it to be colder than normal, thanks to the fact that that's what we typically see during weak La Nina. The MMME model is leaning towards average or slightly above above average shifters here, but I'd ignore it thanks to the strong bias it has. And it's at least still showing a relative a relatively below normal temperatures in this area relative to the rest of the United States. So I do still believe it'll be colder than normal in this area for the coldest that um, temperature would be colder than what you see typically see during the winter time frame. And this could even extend into portions of northern northeast as well. But for the southern United States, I'll say it's pretty accurate when it comes to um, the temperature anomaly where that's what we typically see during week La Nina and thanks to Jow that's going on right around tech the Texas area I do believe that the warmer than normal temperatures will continue into the December through February time frame this year Another thing that's good to take a look at is the sea surface temperatures um, across the Pacific coast as well as the Atlantic coast and of course up along the Atlantic coast the water temperatures are warmer than average so if you're right up along some of the coastal cities such as Miami, Jacksonville, Myrtle Beach and next thing it's Virginia Beach and even New York City and Boston. I would expect the temperature to slight be a little bit warmer thanks to the warmer than average on water temperatures. More simply for the southeast, I do expect it to be warmer than average. Right up along the northeast, um, especially near Boston and New York City, I do expect the temperatures to fall a little bit closer to average because while a weak La Nina does bring the possibility of colder than normal temperatures in Boston, New York City, I do believe the warmer than average water temperatures will also contribute to potentially warmer than normal conditions right up along the Boston and New York, pretty much the Interstate 95 corridor cities of the Northeast. So I mainly expect average temperatures throughout those cities. So I do expect the coldest temperature you to see, um, you'll see this winter to be typically what you'd expect during any given winter. And then for the Pacific coast, we see that for um, um, the coastal cities like San Diego, LA, and extending into um, San Francisco, Seattle, Portland, the Pacific coast is currently experiencing sea surf temperatures below normal. So this could easily change, um, but I do believe that right up along a lot of these coastal cities, especially since the sea surf temperatures play a much more pivotal role in terms of the temperature in the western coastal cities compared to the eastern coastal cities because of course weather moves from west to east, I do believe this could help contribute to the temperatures being colder than normal, especially in the Pacific Northwest where it's already expected to be colder than normal. But I, I'm talking more simply about the southern um, west coast um, cities where during a week La Nina, it might not be necessarily that much colder than normal, such as um, LA, San Diego, and San Francisco. Um, I think that this there is a possibility this winter will be colder than normal in those cities thanks to those um, cooler than average sea surf temperatures. So your coldest temperature in those cities will be colder than what you typically expect. So here's the coldest temperature you should expect in each area of the United States this winter. So I did take the average um, coldest temperature you see in any given, in an average winter. And then based on the factors we're gonna see this winter, I adjusted the map of where exactly you will experience each temperature based on whether it's gonna be colder than normal in a specific area or warmer than normal in a specific area. So in the extreme northern portions of the Midwest, this includes North Dakota, Minnesota, Wins portions of Wisconsin and Montana. I do expect your core temperature to be um, um, negative 30 and potentially even lower than that as is in a lot of these areas that's simply what you see during the winter time frame but 
in uh, other areas that is colder than what you see during the winter time as this area where you're expected to receive negative 30 degree temperatures and lower is further southward than your typical winter time frame so in the areas further southward you very well could see negative 30 degree temperatures when you might not necessarily experience it in an average winter time so definitely be prepared for the temperatures to be much colder than normal throughout the northern midwest there's just south of that your cold temperature should be um, anywhere between negative 20 and negative 30 this includes minneapolis fargo um and this includes um this extends into wyoming as well and montana this is where i'd expect the temperatures to be hover anywhere between negative 20 and negative 30 again this is for a southward than what you typically see there is that possibility that the moin could see your coldest temperature being colder than negative 20 which would be quite insane for the winter time frame and definitely not something you see um in um every winter in the des moines area and then just out of that you should expect your cold scepter to, to hover anywhere between negative 10 to negative 20 degrees as this up extends into much of the interior northeast the higher elevations of the northeast more simply this includes detroit which is something that detroit typically doesn't experience the typical the typical coldest temperature you see during the winter time frame in detroit is anywhere between zero to negative 10 degrees in detroit this winter i'm expecting it to be anywhere between negative 10 to negative 20 degrees um which is colder than what you typically um see um chicago you should expect the same and this extends into omaha as well and even denver colorado could get involved with your cold temperature being anywhere between negative 10 negative 20 degrees below um um negative 20 degrees just in general um and then for just the areas of south that you should expect your um cold scepter to be anywhere between zero to negative 10 this includes boston this includes much of connecticut and this extends into much of the Ohio Valley, such as um, Cincinnati could get involved with this, as well as St. Louis and portions of Kansas. You should expect your cold temperature to be below zero, most likely. So definitely be prepared for those very cold conditions in those areas. And then just out of that, you should expect your um, cold temperature to hover anywhere between 10 to zero degrees. This includes much of the interstate and five corridor cities now, such as um, New York City, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., which is around what you typically ex um, expect as a cold scepter during the winter time frame, mainly because I do expect temperatures to mainly hover um, closer to what you typically see during the winter time frame, right up along the Interstate 95 corridor. This extends into Memphis as well, Little Rock, um, Oklahoma City. This, These are the areas where you should expect you, um, your cold scepter to be anywhere between 10 to 0 degrees um, z um, zero degrees during the winter. So just out of that, you should expect um, your core scepter to be anywhere between 20 to 10 degrees. So pretty much um, your core scepter to be in the teens. This includes Atlanta. This includes Charlotte. This includes um, Charleston, South Carolina. And this extends into Dallas, Texas. As in these areas, this is what you typically expect. But in some areas, this is war um, warmer than what you typically see as your core scepter during the winter time frame so that definitely is very helpful in some of these areas such as in atlanta where you tip your cold scepter is typically um closer to 10 degrees but i expect it to be closer to 20 degrees um this winter thanks to the fact that i do expect it to be warmer than normal in the southeast just south that expect your cold scepter to hover between freezing to 20 degrees this includes jacksonville this includes houston this includes phoenix so definitely expect that in those areas and then just south of that you should should expect your temperatures to hover above freezing this includes miami tampa which tampa that is warmer than what you typically see as your cold scepter during the winter time frame and los angeles and san diego will be involved with this as well so this is my overall coldest temperature um forecast for this winter if you want even more in detail forecast regarding what the cold scepter should be in your specific location just make sure to comment down below your specific location and i'll make sure to give you guys a more detailed outlook regarding what your coldest temperature um should be this winter so comment down below if you're interested but that's it for now guys and i thank you guys for watching